Okay, so first off, I'm McKaylee. I'm the international student recruiter in the international admissions office. Um, so thank you to everybody who is able to attend today. We do have a few students who are going to share a little bit about their experience. Um, so first I'd like to introduce Paula, who's one of our current students. Uh, Paula, if you could please do a self introduction and then talk a little bit about your experience here. Of course. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Paula. I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, it's my second year in UAW studying international business. And really, it's been one of the best experiences I've had. Like, it was hard, definitely, like moving from Mexico here. But then again, the culture is not that different. So if you're from Mexico, you'll feel comfortable in San Antonio. And also, our campus is pretty small and everybody's super friendly. So you'll be able to make friends pretty easily. And if not, I'll be there. I'll be your friend. Everything's fine. And there's a lot of business um, events around campus. The most recent one I've been to is a career fair. And it's specifically for business school. And in there, this year, well, this semester, there were around 30 um, companies that they're just interested in seeing like the interest from students. I went there as a sophomore and companies really like that. Like they don't, they don't like you just, if you're a senior, you go and be like, oh, I'm ready to graduate. Here's my resume. Like I want, I want a job. It's better if you go from the start and from there, you can also get pointer from the companies and what to improve or what to look for to improve your resume. So that's pretty cool. Um, other business opportunities or well, things I like from the business school is the professors, since it's a small community of professors, they're all willing to help you. This semester, when we transition to online, most of my business professors, or well, if not all of them, they're pretty open and um, willing to the change. And they were all super helpful through email or through Zoom if we had any questions. And that really like facilitated everything for me and I know for my classmates in the in these classes. And I don't know, one of my favorite business classes would be business stats, that's statistics. Um, I know it sounds kind of boring for most, but the professor really made it interesting. I don't know if previous students that are here, I know Francisco graduated. Uh, I see a stack over there. I know you guys are business too. Did, I don't know if you knew uh, Professor Harmson, but yeah, I see Francisco like saying yes, but he makes the class really interesting. And since the biggest class you have in the business school could be probably 30 people, you can really engage with your classmates and with the professor, and that's a big advantage I see in UIW. I don't know if is there any questions or do you want me to talk about anything specific from UIW? Michaela? Oh, no, that's great. Um, if you have anything else you'd like to add, um, if not, we'll switch over to Francisco and then maybe um, if any of the attendees have any questions, we can go from there. Yeah. I mean, as of now, I don't have anything to add. I'll just say that we'll welcome you at UIW with open arms. And if you have any questions, like specifically for the business school, I don't know if Michaela, if they ask you for an international business student, you can definitely share my contact if they have any specific questions, email or whatever. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paula. No problem. Francisco, would you like to share next? Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I'll start by with my experience at UIW. Uh, I did there my BBA and then my MBA. It's, it was amazing. Honestly, even when you arrive there, you're not alone. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter the country you're coming from, you're going to be able to find their people from all over the world. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, I haven't been a semester there. I guess alone or not knowing someone from like many, many different countries. Uh, the years I spent there, it's my opinion, legendary. Uh, I love mm -hmm. them uh, quite. I have a lot of friends uh, now that have graduated from Incarnate Word and um, I'm able to go visit them anywhere in the US, Germany, Saudi Arabia. It, 
it's crazy the, the amount of people uh, you meet here in a short time, like within months, and they became friends for life. Uh, you can visit them all over the world. It's awesome. And as per uh, the business school, uh, what can I say? It's also one of the best. Uh, I've learned so much. Uh, I've been lucky enough now I'm, I'm working, able to put to a test what I have been taught. And uh, yeah, I'm like, uh, it's awesome. Like uh, all the skills that they've taught me, all the analysis that I can do, everything, it really sets me apart from the rest of my peers in, in my company. And it's like you come out and you know your stuff uh, from the professors there. Well, you can see here Dr. Rubio, which I love her. I've had uh, many classes with her. I could say uh, I started her first class. <laughs> I swear to God, I I feared her so much. I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to pass this class. How am I going to do it? Um, she's actually, I, I thank her a lot because she, she actually taught me two things. First, finance. And second, uh, twofold, how to work hard to earn what you want and uh, how to real study. Um, it's, it's hard to come by uh, with professors that actually care for you, that will put their two cents in there just to, to make you a good student. And uh, Dr. Ruby is not the only one. There's a lot of professors in all in kind of work. Like I can name Dr. Moreno, I know Bassi, Dr. Bassi, uh, VQuest. The, the professors, they really care for the students and they will make you a better student and you will learn a lot of super useful, super useful skills that believe me when you get out there, I mean, uh, you'll be able to put them to a test and people will ask, hey, teach me. And you'll be able to say, yeah, I had this professor in Carnet work, go Cardinals and all of the rest. But yeah, uh, I don't know if you want me to touch on something else. Can you talk a little bit about your uh, current position and how you think UIW prepared you to go into the career world? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, right now I'm working at Indeed.com. It's the, the biggest job board in the world, as I call it. We're beating LinkedIn, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, it kind of prepared me Amazingly, uh, I, I need to use my economic knowledge and financial knowledge to, I guess, structure the strategy for the markets I basically own, which is Spain and America, all Spanish-speaking languages. Uh, with that said, uh, I have to be able to know all of the economic data coming in uh, to, to accurately design a strategy based on how strict are we going to be with quality? How strict are we going to be with risk? Uh, with that on mind, uh, we plan ahead. We, we do models uh, just to make the markets grow, uh, per se. Another good thing that, as I was mentioning, all the research skills uh, can name Capstone. The class before you graduate will teach you this perfect and to the mark. Uh, the research you have to put into something, uh, to an investigation, just to get the, the good result, that research, that like the whole process. Uh, I do half of the work that I did in Capstone and I swear to God, it sets me apart. And it's, uh, that's, that's why I say it, it really does prepare you. And uh, lastly, one more thing that I never thought it would prepare me for my job, but it actually did. Uh, my department is very international, and uh, curiously, I'm able to speak with almost every analyst about their countries, and I'm able to say words in, to the German analysts because I've met German people. Uh, we have people from uh, Saudi there. We have people from Italy, and I've met all those nationalities at Incarnate World also, and uh, people at the workplace, they love knowing about cultures and uh, I guess I was very prepared to talk to anyone from every country. And I guess I, I know my word or two in any language. So it also prepared me for that, like super good. Awesome. Thank you so much, both Francisco and Paula.
Um, if you're able to stay around for the Q&A later, that's great, but I know you have uh, meetings and it's finals week, so if you need to uh, log off, that's okay. Thank you very much for joining us today and giving the student and alumni perspective on the business school at UAW. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I just want to add something to what Francisco said at the end of all the nationalities that he met at UAW. Actually, I met Francisco through a Saudi friend from UAW. So UIW is great with all the internationals. Uh, I mean, I guess the biggest population of internationals is Mexicans and Saudis, but there's from all over the world. I've met people from Germany, from Greece, um, also from France, even Korea. There was this one girl, girl from Mongolia, I believe. There's a bunch of nationalities and you'll have a good time, believe me and you can learn a bunch of languages. That's a big plus for it. Yeah. Totally agree. <laughs> well, before I pass it on to Dr. Rubio, do any of our attendees have any questions for either Paula or Francisco? You can either type in the chat box or come on the microphone. Paula or Francisco, were either of you part of any uh, business-related clubs or organizations on campus? So I recently joined the CEO club. It's, um, I don't know exactly what the C means, but it's for entrepreneurs. And it's a, um, it's a club that is nationwide. And in our school at UAW, Dr. Oyedeli is the one who like, runs it. And in that club, I've learned like um, so we're a group of students that you share an idea that you have for business and as well as a professor, so Dr. Oyedeli and then our, the classmates, if you want to call them like that, or clubmates, we all kind of help each other to better that idea or see what challenges could we like overcome or what challenges are for that specific idea. So the CEO club has really like increased my learning because as of now, I don't know of an um, entrepreneurship class at UIW, but it does help if you in the future when you graduate or even now you want to start your own business. And I believe that's the, oh, and also the business club that it's just a, a business students that also share their ideas and we also organize fundraisers for then creating future events for the whole business school. Um, the last thing we did was kind of a barbecue, but that was semesters previous to this one. I was not able to organize that one, but it was pretty fun. We just put a tent outside the um, business building and we started giving out food. A bunch of business professors joined. It was just a nice way of taking the edge off before finals and that was really nice, yeah. Great, thank you. I guess I'll add in some uh, maybe non-business non related clubs. Uh, I've been part of, I guess, two memorable clubs that like they will stay in my memory forever. First, uh, it was, uh, I don't know if it's still active, but I know there's many organizations like it, Mexicano Zen, uh, or uh, through that organization I met a lot of people through campus, like organizations, the clubs there, it's also a key just to meet about everybody there. And as you'll learn, like the second step here, networking is a key to like, if you want a job afterwards and all of your peers will graduate and they will get a job somewhere and uh, they will know you and they will help you out. Um, the second club that I have to mention is club soccer. I just have to mention, uh, I think Coach Isaac is here. I have never run so much in my life. I like, He's, he's awesome. Um, you get to meet a, a lot of peers there. Uh, you get to engage in leadership positions. You, it's, a, it's a soccer team and it's, it's awesome. Uh, if you like that, I mean, uh, also go for it. The people you meet there, I still know them. I, I still see them. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paula and Francisco for joining us today. Um, I know you have finals and meetings coming up, so if you need to log off, that's fine. But thank you very much for your time. It was really good to hear your perspective 
on the business school. So thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. I do have a meeting at 1030, so I'll, I'll have to leave you. But I hope everyone got um, a little bit more out of this experience and they're more interested in going to UNW now. And then again, if you have any further questions, you can ask McKaylee or anything specific from international business. You can talk to me if you want to. I'm open to answer any questions since UIW is really a great school. So have a good morning and hope to see you around in campus. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. I'll be able to hang around here until 11. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to uh, pass it off to Dr. Rubio, who will be doing the presentation. Uh, Dr. Rubio, are you able to share your screen? Yes, I am able to. Let me see. Should I, do you want me to introduce myself or do you want to go straight to it? Oh, no, please introduce yourself first. Okay. All right. Um, well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Alicia Rubio. I've been at UIW for 11 years. Um, I'm originally from Mexico, uh, been in the United States, I think about 18 years. Um, I teach finance, um, so that's a discipline that I teach, but I am now the BBA director, so I I don't really know what that means, but um, I do uh, will, I mean, touch with all the different disciplines. So um, Michaela put to, um, asked me to put together something to share with, with you guys. And so just look at this. This is not a class. This is not a lecture. This is uh, very as interactive as you want it to be. Um, you can type a question if you have one. Um, you can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and just, even if I'm talking, you can uh, jump right in. That's okay. Um, and so what I wanted to, I know some of these things you already know just from your interactions with the International Students Office, uh, but nevertheless, I just want to touch on it a little bit so I can talk about um, why we do and why hopefully we're a good uh, fit for you. Um, and so I'm just gonna give you a quick overview um, of our program. And also I'm gonna talk about the opportunities for professional developing, development and networking and, and so forth. And by the way, Francisco did a, a great inter introduction of our uh, capstone classes. Um, so our program, I'm gonna talk about the undergraduate program. Of course, we have an MBA and also we have a a master's in science of accounting. So that's something that you should consider um, in the future. Um, we want to get you ready for high achieving careers. Um, our curriculum emphasizes both theory but also practical application. Um, and we do focus on contemporary issues facing our organizations and industry. Um, along with the UIW mission, and this is something that Francisco uh, pointed out, yes, we want you to know all this stuff, but we are interested in educating the whole person. So it's not just, oh, here you go, come to class if you want to, or even don't come to class, here's the material, as long as you learn it, you're fine. No, we want you to be involved and we want you to grow in your knowledge and the skills that you're gonna need for when you graduate, but we also want you to grow as a person. And that may look like, well, you know, my parents are not here. Do I have to go to class? Uh, my professor does not take attendance, but some professors do, um, but nobody's really hovering over you seeing what you do, so it's totally your choice. I do have freedom in, do I go to class and then do I show up to class? on time. Well, you're going to find everyone is going to have a different approach, but we do want you to come to class and we do want you to come on time and be ready and we're going to be holding you accountable for it. Well, but we'll be nice about it. I want to say for the most part, but like I said, it's about growing and getting you ready for a high achieving career if that's what you're looking for. Um, we do have several concentrations. Um, accounting, economics, finance is the one that I know the most about because it's the one that I teach. 
Uh, we also, if you are more into, you don't know, I know, you know, some people know they want to uh, major in business, but you're unsure about which one's the one discipline to you, um, the one that speaks the most to you, maybe you don't have one. You can do general business and this one's a great opportunity to explore. You can take classes from all the different uh, concentrations and it'll count towards your degree. Um, international business, like Paula said um, earlier, management, management information systems, we also have a professional golf management concentration and a sport management concentration. And this one's uh, in between the nursing school because of the sports side of the concentration and then the business classes that you have to take in order to graduate with that concentration. Um, we have several minors, not for every one of the disciplines, uh, but you could major in something. And so it's fairly typical to see accounting students major uh, minor in finance or finance students minoring in accounting or economics. Um, accounting also um, likes to take classes in um, MIS, but um, I mean the, the second minor, um, business administration, and that's for um, if you're coming from a different school or maybe you're engineering, although they do take business classes or math or any other major, you can do a business administration uh, minor or you can do for a minor for any of the disciplines. Because you do have general electives within your degree plan, there's space within the hours that you have to take if you start planning early on with uh, your advisor so that you don't have to spend an extra semester studying just to get a minor. You can fit it in pretty well within um, your four years. I've seen people do it actually in three and a half years, international students uh, with the BVA and a minor just by taking summer classes. So it's doable if you want to do it faster. Um, the capstone experience, we're, we're really proud of what we do in the business school and um, that this is like the one thing all of the concentrations in the BBA have in common, the one thing when you come on campus, we tell you this is what you have to look forward to because um, we do have 15 classes in the business core. And then out of those 15, you have to take 13 in order to get to the two capstone. Um, so there's two capstone classes um, and we want you to take them in your last two semesters. Um, they're to challenge you to apply everything you've learned in your accounting, economics, finance, um, MIS, marketing, your national business, business law. We do want you to apply it and, and put it all together. Um, you work in teams. You also do some things independently. Um, like Francisco said, the first Capstone is more about doing research about a business and developing or analyzing their strategy. Um, so do you do have to write a fairly large paper. Um, but again, the idea is take everything that you know from your other classes and apply it and put it all together, which is a different kind of skill, but we found it's been very useful um, to the people who graduate. Um, if you're interested in learning more, um, I'm not sure how much you've been to our website, but we do have this information on our website, so you're welcome to browse around. Um, there's a link there about the capstone experience. And so first capstone is mostly about business research and, and strategy. Um, second capstone, that's the one that we call the live experience because for that second capstone, you are going to work as a group with a business. Um, and there's no way to know what kind of business you're going to get because they change every semester. So just to give you an idea, uh, these are from the last couple semesters. It could be a coffee shop um, and they need help with their supply chain management. Um, it could be, uh, a nonprofit and they need help with uh, fundraising, but also they need help with their marketing. Some companies need help with their HR training plan. 
Uh, maybe they're spending too much money in training their employees and it's not really uh, reaping benefits. So now they have to think about, well, what's a good metric to evaluate the plans and how do we de redesign it? Um, we also have internal clients. We'll see like a school of pharmacy from UIW. Uh, they were looking into adding a new program, but they didn't know if they were going to have the market to. So it's it always all of these projects that are um, internal, but that particular department does not have the expertise um, or they don't want to spend, uh, you know, thousands of dollars hiring a consultant. They just come to the capstone students and say, uh, we have this problem, can you help us? And so the students have to do the research. Um, and so the students are working um, with actual clients. This is not your professor telling you, yes, you're doing a good job. Uh, this is your final capstone presentation is preparing the project for the client, but getting in front of the client and telling them, this is our solution to your problem. And the client is going to give you feedback. They'll either be really pleased or they'll tell you, you know, this wasn't helpful. So they're they're going to have a, a lot to say in the grade that you're going to get because it's not your professor's opinion, it's your actual client opinion. Um, so it's a little intimidating, um, but also I see um, a lot of students growing. Um, as, you know, personally, because you have to work in, within a group, some of those, the people in the group, maybe your friends, or maybe you've never met them. So you, you have a say into, your professor will say, these are the projects that we have this semester, which one's interesting to you and why, and then you will be assigned to that particular project, which means that you're gonna end up working uh, with people that you've never worked with before. And, and it helps you grow. Okay, these, uh, this person is not doing their work. How do I talk to them? But I want to be nice about it. Your peers will also grade your work. Um, so again, it lends itself to a lot of growing in your skills, but also growing as a person and learning the skills that you're going to need uh, for when you graduate, right? Because we all know if we've had a job that you don't always like 100% of the people that you work with, but you need to learn to be professional and you need to come across as someone who is you know, has good manners and manners and wants to get the job done and also wants to grow. Um, so that's for the capstone, like I said, two different classes, one semester after the other, but um, it is the way you celebrate all the hard work you've done for the past um, three years. Um, other than our curriculum, we do have um, quite a few initiative for professional development. And, and both Paula and Francisco talked about it. I do want to say there's plenty of opportunities, but you do have to come get them. Nobody, well, sometimes your professors will come after you and say, you need to do this and give it a try, but um, you can get as far as you want, um, but you have to want it, um, like Francisco said, you want something, you want to, you have to work for it and, and we'll be around to support you and to help you, but we do want you to go for things, not just wait for, okay, let's see what happens. Um, so Paula already talked about this. She talked about the CEO of the club. Um, this is not the same, but it's related actually, well, the CEO is related to the pitch competition, which where you have an idea then um, you pitch it, you present it, and this is for a new business opportunity. Um, and you can um, earn money by, by winning. We also have a startup challenge. This used to be known as a business plan competition, but now we, are, um, we actually have money. Um, I believe the first place, there's a $10,000 prize, and this is seed money for a business opportunity. Um, for this one, we actually have students from um, Incarnate Word Mexico participate. Um, and so um, what happens is usually in the fall semester, a re re registration will open and there's going to be um, a group. They want you to work in a group uh, with a business idea, but you will be assigned a mentor. Um, and this is someone from the business community who will show you 
the things that you, how do you put a business plan? Okay, this is my idea. How are you going to market it? How are you going to sell it? What are going to be your costs so that you can put all the financials, uh, the marketing, the strategy together. And then by the end of the semester, you'll do a presentation. Um, your idea and your business plan will be judged. And if you win, then again, your group wins $10,000 that can be used. Um, for your um, to get your business started um, and so those two um, because we have uh, Dr. Oyedele a great he's great with entrepreneurship and there's plenty of opportunities um, if this is what you're thinking you want to do have your own business later on um, something that we have specifically for finance students but also anyone yes and Francisco can actually he participated in this in this class, student managed bond. He can tell you um, what we can tell you about this. We've been doing it, I believe, for three years. Um, is that right, Francisco? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Um, very stressful class because you do have to manage a small piece of our endowment. Um, nothing huge compared to other universities but that's not the point and the amount of money is not the point the point is that you get to manage that money at this point you'll inherit a portfolio from the previous class it runs every semester um, and then you have to go analyze the investments we do have a bloomberg terminal on campus um, you get bloomberg certified which is also extremely valuable um, to finance students um, and then you have to do a lot of investment research and three or four times during the semester, you do presentations um, to the student managed fund committee, which is finance professors, but also the CFO, the UIW CFO um, and other people from the business. Um, the finance department come over and they listen to um, your ideas where you say, yes, we should keep this in the portfolio or not, we have to replace it. Um, all of the students who've participated have been to 100% placed in a um, finance position related to this. So it is probably in the finance department, the largest uh, placement we have. It's not the only one, but you're pretty much because of all the work that you do and the credentials that you build and you add to your resume, um, that you are going to get a job uh, related to, to financial research or financial analysis. Uh, for accounting students, we have the VITA program. This is uh, filing income tax um, for uh, people who um, are, lower earners um, and so this is great opportunity hands-on the students have to do some training and get certified and then every saturday they come to campus with their professors so this is through a class or you could do it for community service um, and then people will line up and you go they'll bring their paperwork and you'll do their taxes uh, for them again you do this with a professor supervisor uh, supervision. So it's it's not on your own, but again, it gives you another um, way to get practical experience. Um, I already talked about the um, pitch competition related to entrepreneurship, um, but uh, we've added since last year a program that is known as career readiness, um, where when you come to the business school, you have to earn points towards your professional development. And you earn those points by doing networking, attending club meetings, going to our um, networking event or our career fair, which happens twice a year, fall and spring. It's specifically for business students. So of course, anybody, any other student can come, but it, the focus is business students. Um, you also get points by participating in the student managed fund, in the startup challenge, um, but other than that, there's plenty within each one of the disciplines, opportunities to join a discipline specific club or to participate in student competitions. And all those student competitions, I'll speak for finance, but it's the same in the other ones. 
You get to go to a conference with your group and compete with students from other universities. And sometimes it's uh, putting together a business plan or doing a financial analysis, and then you can win. And sometimes you win scholarship money and money for the school, um, but it's a great experience. Another resume builder, um, our students, when they decide they want to participate, they do fairly well. Um, and like I said before, you need to, to want it to go get it, but other than, you know, meeting students from other universities and in, in nice cities around the U.S., you also get to network with professionals and our students have received job offers when they participate in those, um, in those events. Um, so many, many, plenty of opportunities for professional development. Hopefully you have a plan and you know what you want to do uh, when you graduate and then you can tailor the opportunities that we have for career readiness to, to your goals as, as you move from, from one year to the other. Um, I'm trying to see, Michaeli, how, how, how am I doing in time? Good? Okay. So one last thing I wanted to show you, and you had the opportunity to meet one of our um, current students and then our graduate. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing just so I can share. What I did is, I'm just gonna take you, so this is something you can do later on. Let me share my, I'm about to share my LinkedIn. So you can see where our students are. And that way you don't have to take my word for it. Or you can see, okay, these are real people actually on LinkedIn. Um, and it's gonna be a combination of, let's see, here. International students, but also um, domestic students. Can you see my LinkedIn contacts? Yes, okay. So here's an example. We have a student, uh, he's an intern at, uh, for the Rockets at the Houston Rockets. Um, he's a basketball player, but then again, other than his sport, uh, he's very involved with um, his discipline. So looking forward to graduating and doing something. We have another student supply chain analyst at, Rack space. He was actually Aaron. Again, another um, a swimmer. Um, he was actually my student and doing great things. A student from Mexico is actually the president of the Student Government Association. So great things are being done. Again, so um, if you're an international student, there's opportunities. We don't say, oh no, you're not from here. You're you're from abroad. There's no opportunity for you. You can go as far as you want to go and. Um, and there's opportunities for you. Look, there's Isaac. Um, let's see. So let me look for an international student. So here's another finance student, retirement plan administra uh, administrator. Uh, I had several. Let's see. I saw them yesterday. Like working abroad for... Ernst and Young. Oh, here's one. Uh, Hassan, senior ex executive at KPMG in Bahrain. He great, great student, very diligently working when went back home, and he got uh, a most excellent job. Um, again, I'm mostly connected with finance students, so you'll see a lot of uh, financial advisors and so forth. But um, our students, we have students working at Holt Cod, uh, CAD. We have, I think there's one more I wanted to show you. Here we have um, students from Germany also go back and, and get good jobs. I'm trying to see who else. Uh, I might be scrolling down too fast. He's another Hassan working at a great student also. So the opportunities are there. I'm trying to see, it's loading. The opportunities are, are there, and they're they're for you to take. And hopefully, 
you're gonna come, we're gonna help you get where you want to get. You just have to be willing to get there and, and put in the work. Um, I think I'm gonna stop now and see if anyone has any questions either uh, through the chat or um, if you want to just uh, unmute yourself and, and say something. I know I had a question. Yes. Um, do you have any examples of some of the work that students have submitted for the pitch competition or um, maybe the startup challenge that you could give an example of, of different projects that they worked on for it? Yes. I just read about the most recent pitch competition and I already most of them, not all of them, are uh, related to food. Um, so opportunities for, for example, like a mobile food truck, uh, but with healthy options. Um, there was another for sugar-free chocolate, but actually tasted pretty good. They won last year. Um, so another important thing is that you, it's not limited to business um, students. So we usually when success happens in some instances, it's because a business student uh, partners with people from pharmacy or from the sciences and they put together the business aspect of a science solution um, and it's usually in the form of food. I'm trying to think um, there was one for the business plan competition. It was kombucha. Um, very um, good quality. So many of them are business rela um, food related, but there's also, there was one about creating energy, energy efficient products. So it can be anywhere from manufacturing a product to food, but the majority are food related for some reason. Great. And I know that we have the advantage of having an on-campus finance lab for our students. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you be able to talk a little bit about that and any other facilities that you find relevant for students looking to study business? Uh, yes, the finance lab was a great addition a, a few years ago. Like, like I said, we have a Bloomberg terminal. We wish we had more, but they're fairly expensive. So Francisco knows that further down his career, he's just going to donate um, a huge uh, sum so we can have a, a finance, a Bloomberg lab in his honor. But uh, while that happens, we do have that Bloomberg terminal. We do have through the library several finance and business specific um, databases that the students can use. The finance lab has computers. Um, but it also feeds in financial information from the st stock market. And so we're able to see how the market is doing. You come into the class and you immediately see the red or the green to signal how the market is doing. We are able to look at um, the different, all the different indexes that you have to look at to take a feel for the economy. We also use Stock track, which is a virtual stock market simulation. Um, every once in a while we'll do a competition, uh, but regardless of the competition for finance, the, the, the one finance class that everybody has to take, you get to participate, your professor will give you money, um, you will be trading with actual I mean, it's virtual money, but the information that you're using to trade is real. So if you want to buy Apple or if you want to buy Amazon or Coca-Cola stock, then you can do it and you do it with that virtual money. You have to put together a portfolio. And then as you progress in the class and you have to uh, write reports about how your portfolio, portfolio is doing and, and what you've learned. And so the finance students use it more, but business students, at least if they only take the one 
uh, finance class, that's where they really get to learn on and be hands on in the stock market without losing actual money. Don't be shy, guys. If you have any questions, this is one of your opportunities to ask. But if you don't really want to put yourself out there, that's fine. You can send us an email later on. Um, so are there any questions? Dr. Rubio, I know both of the, the students that are currently on are student athletes. Um, one's coming in for basketball and the other's coming in for swimming. Okay. Uh, can you talk a bit about, I guess, the, if experience you've had with advisees on balancing athletics competitions practices with getting involved in the business school and professional development and things like that absolutely um it's it's i have seen great things done by athletes um i think the number one skill is time management and finding a plan to get organized. I mean, it applies to, to you whether you're an athlete or not, but um, it amazes me. So 55% of the athletes are actually business students. Um, we never have issues with, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be out of town swimming, you know, in the spring, they're gone for a whole week. Um, you make up the work and yes, it gets stressful, but if you know how to plan for it, um, then you'll be fine. Um, it'll interfere a little bit. Your, your sport will interfere with opportunities to participate in maybe some of the um, student competitions that are available within your discipline, but um, it is doable. Um, what we really tell the athletes is, you know, your your sport is extremely important. You may even come with a scholarship. And so you need to be subject to your coaches rules with regards to GPA and all that. But um, your freshman year, yes, do focus on getting used to your new routine and um, and your sport. But then after that, you have to think about your sport as it, it's going to come to an end eventually, at least college wise. And the big deal is what are you going to do when you graduate? Um, we don't want you to put it all out in your sport and then you graduate in May. Um, and whether you go back to your country or you stay here, you don't know what to do uh, with your degree. Um, so we will be reminding even though you may say, well, I'm an international student and I'm an athlete. Yes, but what are you going to do afterwards? I have seen, um, I think there's, I, um, you probably saw one of the people on my LinkedIn, Kyle, um, he played basketball. He became viral because um, the UIW team a few years ago won against, I think it was Nebraska, maybe a big, a big shot school and and he did the last shot, and, and that's how UIW won. Um, great student, um, ended up going to play basketball in Spain, actually, for a couple years at least. Um, and then he came back, and he got plugged in, and he was the one who's a retirement plan administrator. Um, so do, it, it, it's a balancing act. First, school and your sport. But then also as you progress, maybe from your second to your fourth year, you have to start thinking about, you know, if you go back home during the summer, you can get many of our athletes go back home and they start working towards getting an internship in their home country during the, um, to, during the summer. And, and we help them here by putting the resume together, how it would look in the United States with their cover letter, with references. You do want to think about your professors if you ask them one day for a letter of reference, are they gonna yet say, absolutely, count me in, or are they gonna ask you? We don't have to give you one. Um, and in some cases, we'll say, you know, I'm not a good reference for you because, I mean, we don't say why, but you should know, right? If you're coming to class late all the time, you're not turning in your assignments, you're not doing, you're talking in class, and there's no change throughout the semester. There's not much your professors can do 
of when you ask for a reference. So we're going to help you, but we're not going to help you in a way that's not possible to help. Um, opportunities in your home country take advantage of, and your professors here will help you as much as possible, but will also help you with opportunities in the country uh, and with your professional development because um, even if you're not able to work here, but you're able to participate in the student managed fund class, that's a, a very uh, translatable experience to anywhere in the world. Um, and like that, again, I speak of finance, but there's opportunities in other disciplines that um, you do in the United States, but you can easily take to your uh, home country and they will serve you well as you're looking for a job. Thank you so much, Dr. Rubio. Um, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our, another current student that we have joining us, uh, Ms. Kiana. Uh, Kiana, if you'd like to turn on your microphone and do a self-intro and then talk a little bit about your experience at the business school here. Hi, my name is Kiana. I'm currently a junior here at UIW, and I have two concentrations actually in both accounting and international business. And so I'm taking classes in both concentrations now. So I'm actually getting a lot of experiences. I'm meeting lots of faculty within even the UIW business department. There's um, the faculty between international business department and accounting, and like they're able to help me connect between the two, maybe career options. There's also classes I can take that go in between both options. Um, one of the things, Dr. Rubio had mentioned her PowerPoint I saw was the VITA program, and that was actually something that I was doing this semester. And so that program, I know it's you're doing taxes for San Antonio residents, and initially as an accounting major, like I was kind of nervous, but it's actually a really great experience um, and definitely a translatable, like that on your resume kind of experience that we offer, and you can get class credit for it. Um, and you just go in on Saturday mornings and you're helping out in the community. You're getting volunteer hours. And I particularly found that class kind of like very intimate with the professors. Like you can just talk with them. It's not like a more formal setting. It's we're all just here helping out people in the community. And so I kind of just found that really interesting um, that she had mentioned that. And I don't know if I need to mention anything else, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, if you have anything else you'd like to add, um, any other kind of business organizations you're involved in, any kind of events you've attended with the business school, such as a uh, networking events, career fairs, something like that, um, or if you just want to touch on maybe a, a class you really enjoy or something that you've benefited from from the faculty. Okay, I will say two things. One, I am an officer of our UIW's Accounting Society. And so with that, we hold meetings. Um, usually it's different, maybe accounting firms that will come to UIW and kind of talk about different opportunities in accounting, because I didn't know accounting could be so diverse. But they'll talk about different opportunities in accounting and maybe what their firm does or what their company does and how your skills might translate into that. And then another thing uh, I will say is we have our UIW career fair uh, every semester. And I was actually encouraged to start going that my very first semester at UIW freshman year. And initially I was like, why am I gonna go to a career fair as a freshman? But I'm so glad that I started going to those early on because going freshman year gave me experience to be comfortable going to career fairs and in a professional setting. So that way, by the time fall semester, so last semester of my junior year, I went to the career fair actually looking for internships and I was able to get two internships just going to that one career fair alone. So now I have an internship for this summer and next summer already set like a year and two out. And so I will say the UIW career fair it really is like a good resource to get jobs or internships for the students. And it's a really good just networking and professional opportunity to get that kind of real life practice in. Awesome, thank you so much. That's really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, glad to know that you found internships through the resources available through the business school. 
Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add about the business program or UIW in general? UAW is awesome. Just living it out there. <laughs> I guess I will say that one thing about UIW is since it is a smaller school, there's kind of pros of a smaller school vibe at a lot of the bigger like public schools maybe. You know, your freshman, sophomore classes, you're in a lecture hall of like 200 people. I don't know, I really, I prefer the smaller schools because of the experience. You kind of, you get to know your classmates, you get to know your professors with the smaller classes. Your professors know you by name, like they literally go out of their way, like Dr. Rubio, to remember every student's name. And like, it's definitely more personal experience when it comes to like letters of recommendations, like Dr. Rubio mentioned, like, you know, the professors know the students and you know your professors. So it's not like you're kind of reaching out to a random person. Like, I don't know, I just also wanted to mention like the kind of personal experience at UIW, a benefit of going to a smaller school is that. Oh, and uh, also one quick thing that uh, I would like to mention on the student managed fund. Uh, I think it's a skill that I learned there that I don't know if it was intended for or not, but in that class, besides the research and everything, when you have to present to uh, the board and the uh, president there and everybody there, when you have to present your decisions, you're basically selling or pitching your decisions there. Uh, that's another skill that I would say uh, it's awesome to have because whenever you go to a company to pitch, uh, your project or, hey, why don't we go this way with my research? Uh, you have experience and one of the best because uh, in that setting, you're pitching an idea of buying a stock or selling a stock or going for bonds or whatever. You're, you're pitching that to people that probably know 10 times more than you uh, and they have like a lifetime experience with it. So that, that experience, in addition to the rest, uh, it will complement you personally and your resume and everything and uh i gotta go but uh it was really nice to see y'all uh take care guys i, I really gotta help out thank you so much for joining us see you bye dr rubio did you have anything else you'd like to add uh you no find i think um I mean, the, the common theme and the students say it, uh, say it because it's true, we're, we've been referred to as a person-to-person -person university, right? So we do want you to come, but not because, I mean, oh, yes, you just come because you want you to, we want more numbers. It's we want you to come because we want to get to know you and we want to help you get to where you want to get. So. Um, that's one of the things that makes UIW special. It's a, the person-to-person -person connection, the smaller class sizes. And like Kiana and Paula and Francisco said, um, we do care about you and you're gonna find out. Maybe, maybe you don't want, maybe you want to be invisible. You're not gonna be invisible. We're gonna notice you or we're gonna try to help you. Um, and if anyone has any questions later on, you're welcome to reach out by email. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone in the fall. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was really helpful, I think, for potential students, but for me as well, to have more talking points and further knowledge about the opportunities available to our students. So whenever I meet people who are interested or prospective students in the business program, I feel like I'll be able to you know, better explain the BBA and the different opportunities we have. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Rubio. Thank you also, Kiana. Uh, we will be posting a recording of this session on our YouTube channel for anyone who um, couldn't make the session today. And we'll also be sending it out via email as well. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be here. Great. All right, well, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day um, and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Bye. Thank you.